All right, darlings. In typical rig style, I have no idea what is going to happen in this PowerPoint. I have no idea. <laughs> I can't remember anything, but I think that we're going to get a little bit. It looks like we're headed in for a little bit of review of our chromosomes. And then I do know that somewhere in here, we're gonna to get to watch the whole process of mitosis take place. First thing, it's probably a good idea to see how I am um, representing the chromatin loosely wound and the chromosomes tightly wound. I think we should probably do some, um, some anatomy. In this, illustration we're going to have the sperm parent in green and the egg parent in blue the distinction in color is not super strong um, but i think there's enough of a difference that as long as you remember that we have all the dna all the chromosomes that we're going to deal with from the sperm parent are going to be colored differently than all the chromosomes that are coming from the egg parent when we wind them up, when we wind that chromosome, that DNA up with those histone proteins, then we get the, um, the condensed version, which again, I've shown a diagrammatic view of this. I wish I would have asked you to tell me what those chromosomes are. They, they look identical. Do you agree with that? They're like, they, they're the same shape, they're the same size, the centromere is in the same location. One came from sperm, one came from egg. Those are homologous chromosomes. And you have 23 pairs. Do you think that I am going to show 23 pairs of homologous chromosomes? Good gracious, I hope not. <laughs> because I had to like build all these things. But we know that they're there and we could do all of them because we have this karyotype that would let us. Okay, we remember that, right? You're golden. Looks like I did four different chromosomes. Oh, look, and I just... <laughs> I see that I shouldn't have said that out loud because that is how many homologous pairs we see. And it was a question and that was really good and I love questions that make you think about it, but I'm not starting this over because it's already three minutes in. All right, so how many? Okay, I told you that there are four pairs of homologous chromosomes. Can you identify them? Match up the homologs, can you do that? Push pause if you need to. Let's see if I do it for you. Do you agree? That's the first homolog. That's the second homolog. You totally got this, didn't you? And the fourth homolog. So there are four pairs of chromosomes in this, in this um, illustration. We would have 23. <laughs> We would have 23 different shaped chromosomes, so you know why I didn't make that. This is interesting, and I didn't talk about this before, but this is gonna be an important thing when we start talking about heredity. When, this is our haploid number. So N represents the number of chromosomes, the number of different chromosomes found in this organism. This organism has four different chromosomes, so the haploid number is four. The diploid number is gonna be eight, because there's actually a total of eight chromosomes there. Ah, look, <laughs> how many total chromosomes do you see, guys? That's eight, and that's our diploid number. Look, why didn't I label it the diploid number? What is our diploid number? 46. What is our haploid number? 23. Okay, good job. What would these look like? 
Okay, what would it all look like if it was in chromatin form, loose chromatin form? Is Let's modify that slightly. What? Okay, imagine. Are you ready? Loose chromatin form. <laughs> is that what you imagined? I think that actually is the, like, eight, I don't know, it doesn't really look like that's eight tangles, but... Um, Maybe. Okay, cell cycle, we're good, right? You remember the cell cycle. It looks like we're gonna do N equals three. So we're gonna use three of those chromosomes that I showed you in the earlier thing. We're gonna use three different ones, but we're diploid. So we're gonna have, um, we're gonna have six chromosomes that we're gonna deal with. In G1, the chromosomes look like this. Do you agree? that we know in interphase our DNA is all in chromatin form. So G1 with three chromosomes, but really there's six in there, right? Because this is a diploid critter. Let's peek. If you had to predict what those chromosomes would look like if we wound them up, because in that state, I dropped my yarn, but in that state, they all look like this. But if you wind them up, and we can, if you wind them up, this works, right? This is what they would look like if you wound them up. And can you identify your homologs? They're numbered. The number ones are homologs, and the twos are homologs, and the threes are homologs. But that's six pieces of DNA that are in that tangle during G1. Okay. During S, we're still in the tangle, but let's just peek at the chromosomes in the beginning. At the beginning of S, what are the chromosomes gonna look like? Just like they looked in G1. This is the beginning of S. What's gonna happen during S? The DNA is gonna get replicated. So what are these guys gonna look like at the end of S? Let's see. Oh, that's what it really looks like. Okay, awesome. What does it look like at the end? <laughs> it still looks like that, but tell me we're gonna peek at the chromosomes. Have you predicted? Yes, we now have sister chromatids. Can you identify your sisters? Each sister, <laughs> is attached at the centromere. You see your centromere in there. And the sisters are attached to each other at the centromeres. We have twice as much DNA. That's at the end of S. Okay, time out. Oh my gosh, I'm such a, oh, that's a technical foul. You didn't get a technical foul unless you don't do this task. Label these chromosomes. I want you to label sister chromatids, the centromeres, the homologous chromosomes, and tell me what the haploid number is. Dude, I have no idea how I'm gonna give you the answer. So you gotta push pause and do those things, and then, cause who knows what's coming next. What? Did we, did we didn't get an answer? Well, I, I really want to see the answer, but you know the answer already because we've done it like a hundred times. So I think we're good. Maybe the only thing that I'd want to say is that each centromere represents an entire chromosome. So you have two sisters attached at a centromere, but that's one chromosome. So the chromosomes are bigger than they used to be, but they still, it's still just one chromosome. Um, okay, but I think everything else is straightforward, yes? And our haploid number in this case is three, still. Okay, but in G2, <laughs> this is what it looks like. Awesome, um, good thing for copy and paste is all I have to say. If we were to peek at the chromosomes, predict what's it gonna look like? The same as it did at the end of S. 
we just have doubled our DNA and all the sisters are attached at centromeres. Okay, shall we see what happens in mitosis? Let's watch. Okay, we have a cell. Do you see my cell, my nuclear envelope? Do you see my centrioles and the nucleolus? Yes, we see all the parts and you see the chromatin. So we're about to start mitosis. What's the first stage of mitosis? Prophase. So let's see, oh, what? Why do we have to do, in, why do we have to do, we just did interphase. All right, fine, we'll do interphase first. G1, yeah, 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 that works for, okay, I see what I'm doing here. S at the beginning, are we gonna peek at S in the beginning? S in the end, that's cool, because we can see that the DNA actually doubled. That's cool. Okay, should we peek at the chromosomes? We're peeking at the chromosomes, this is what they look like, awesome. G2, yeah, 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 whatever. Okay, now we're gonna go into prophase, yes? Yes, but why did our cell disappear? I don't know, that was an extra slide. Okay, what's gonna happen in prophase? When I whisper, I should whisper right into the microphone. What's gonna happen in prophase? Did you predict that? Look at the nuclear envelope is disappearing and a chromosome condensed. Okay, they don't condense like this, but there's no planet on which I am going to condense them any different. What else do you notice is happening? We're condensing our chromosomes. What's happening to the nucleolus? I don't know if you can tell. This is very effective animation technique. The nucleolus is getting lighter, fainter, because it's disappearing. So is the nuclear envelope. It is also disappearing. Who is migrating? Dude, we got some migration going on. Look, we've got our spindle fibers forming and our centrioles are migrating. And then I'm like, dude, pro-metaphase, sure, we'll call it that. Because what even is that? It's just late prophase. And this is the part where our spindle fibers are starting to attach in prometaphase. We're starting to attach. Look at how those spindle fibers are jockeying around our chromosomes and starting to attach. That kind of looks like early metaphase to me. We're jockeying around, but it looks like we're lining up on the equator. Now, look, I put pro in parentheses because I'm like, dude, it's kind of like going away because it really is sort of like we've jockeyed ourselves into metaphase. Ah, we've, we're lined up. All the centrioles are right down. Centromeres are right down the middle in the metaphase plate. The centrioles are attached to all those centromeres with the spindle fibers. What? So cool. Who's next? Anaphase. And easy, what's gonna happen? Watch. Pull, shorten the spindle fibers, go centrioles, pull. It's like tug of war, except each chromosome splits. How many centromeres do you see though? They get, do you see how, okay, now is this really still anaphase or could we say that we're kind of in telophase right now? Doesn't look like you can get much closer to the pole. Oh, but look what's happening. Simultaneous, okay, telophase is, it. we concluded that telophase is done. I would argue that that's probably really close to telophase. It looks like it's the cell is sort of elongating. We should be sending everything backwards, right? Everything that happened in prophase should redo. So look, look, this is a great opportunity 
to see that, okay, our nucleolus started to come back, our centromere, centrioles are starting to disappear, but take a look at the chromosomes. We have one, one in, one of each is in each pole and we're reforming the nuclear envelope. The nucleolus is getting brighter. The nuclear envelope is getting stronger and cytokinesis is happening while the cytoplasm is actually being divided up. And voila, cytokinesis is done. We didn't um, dissolve. One thing that didn't happen that I didn't illustrate is the, um, the unwinding of all those chromosomes in the nucleus. I didn't show that, but that's definitely happening in telophase. It's another really good example of the, um, um, oh, come on now. I, the drawbacks, the, the, there's a word that I'm looking for, for images, the downside, the, I don't know what word I'm looking for. That's because it's late. I'm not supposed to do these when it's late. Okay, but that's okay, because we're almost done. Um, we have a summary just to look at the what we started with. And we went through that that cell is diploid. You agree because we've got two copies of every chromosome. Went through mitosis. And this is what we ended up with. Like that, I actually pulled that from the previous slide. And it's exactly the same. Count the chromosomes. Those are exactly the same number of chromosomes. It's identical. So you end up with two identical diploid daughter cells. I'm harping on <laughs> some facts, like, right, the sisters split. The number of chromosomes is the same. The daughters are identical. These are things, these are qualities that we'll see are different when we go through the process of meiosis in the next lecture. I think that's it. I think that you're about to get a the end slide. That was the best part of the whole animation is that I predicted correctly the end. Okay, don't go away. There's one more little blip about mitosis gone bad.